Well, I'm going to start off my DC Direct JSA review, figure reviews um, with one of the founding members of the JSA, the stalwart member, uh, right up until the present, and that's the Jay Garrick Flash. Now, Jay Garrick first appears in Flash Comics number one, big surprise, in 1940. This is one of the earlier DC Direct figures. It's a time when they were trying to do not really generic, but an all-around good, almost realistic type sculpt of characters evoking no specific artist. Something that they've completely done a 180 on. Uh, whereas nowadays it seems every line that they do is targeted to try and capture a specific uh, artist's work in a 3D uh, figure. I kind of almost prefer it this way so that you can get a good, just a good representation uh, so all your figures look good together and look like they come from the same same universe. You don't have like an Ed McGuinness next to a uh, George Perez next to a Jim Lee. Well, each of those look good in their own right. Uh, when they put together, it can be somewhat off-putting. But now we have the DC Universe classics. Now he does come with a base. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the base here. Uh, it is packed away somewhere. And uh, his helmet comes off. You see he's got a little peg in there. Just pegs right into the top of his head. Yes, he's got a hole in his head. But you put this on and... No, that's all right. Uh, very rarely do I have him with his uh, with his hat off. Now the costume is is like most costumes of the time, very simple. This being like a kind of like a turtleneck shirt over jeans uh, or jeans type pants with a belt and boots that he's had these little wings on. Very reminiscent, of course, of Mercury or uh, Hermes, the uh, Greek Roman god. For articulation, his head goes side to side. Uh, arms go all the way around, in and out. Like the early DC Direct, he has got this little bit of a twist in the shoulder. And his elbows bend. No wrist rotation is... Uh, Legs go forward and back, bend at the knee, bend at the ankle. Jason J. Garrick, a chemist student, uh, when he's exposed to this uh, chemical, uh, first identified as hard water, which uh, I had in one of my houses, but uh, that didn't give me super speed. It just, uh, you know... Uh, was tough to clean. I think what they meant, and it was later retconned in that it was actually heavy water, which is used uh, in the study of nuclear reactions. So in the comic book world, heavy water itself gives him super speed or uh, activates what in the DC universe is called the metagene. Uh, regardless, that's how his super speed starts. You know, he uses it quite selfishly at first uh, to become a football star. And when he graduates, he, he gets the feeling that he should do a little bit more, something more constructive with his power. Something, something better than just, uh, you know, being a football star. And so he decides what else... Um, are you going to be except a uh, superhero? Well, at that time, 
you know, they were called masked, uh, or mystery men, mystery men. And, uh, so he gets his, uh, puts together a costume, gets his helmet, uh, gets his father's World War I helmet, and modifies it by adding these nifty little wings on there, and becomes the Flash. Now, you're thinking, wait, he's running around without a mask on, so how does, you know, how does he stop people from figuring out that Jay Garrick and the Flash are the same? Well, uh, he very cleverly uh, vibrates his face, so his facial features are pretty much indistinguishable. They use the same explanation in Superman. Interesting that they share that little quirk. Now, of course, after becoming a very successful uh, mystery man, uh, he joins with a bunch of other mystery men and forms the JSA. And actually becomes close friends with the Green Lantern of the time, Alan Scott. We get into the Silver Age, and uh, the the two Earths, where uh, he exists on Earth Two, even though he came first, and Barry Allen, the the Silver Age Flash, exists on Earth One. Barry Allen uh, manages to come to Earth. To and uh, brings the Flash out of retirement um, because he 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 was for actually all the JSA was forced out of retirement in 1951 because of the uh, House of Un-American Activities Committee. They were going to prosecute them if uh, they didn't reveal their identities. So rather than uh, rather than go through that, uh, most of the most of the JSA retired. Uh, Jay and most of the JSA have been kept young by uh, unintended exposures to magic and science throughout their adventures. And uh, they've even spent uh, time in a limbo. So, all this, all this stuff kept him, well, physically, in his mid fifties, but chronologically, he's more closer to ninety. After a crisis on Infinite Earth happens, and Earth One and Earth Two are merged. It, explain his absence is that Keystone became this uh, lost city suspended in time. Barry Allen freed it. Since coming out of that he's uh, he's been a mentor and a father figure to many heroes. He is married to uh, Joan Garrick um, and uh, they've taken responsibility for some young heroes. Uh, Impulse, the second Kid Flash, and J.J. Thunder, or Jakeem Thunder. First powers, obviously, he's uh, he has super speed. He's able to uh, access the source of power that uh, gives features their... their uh, Super speed, and that's called speed force. He's got superhuman reflexes, and uh, generates a protective aura to shield him from the effects that, that uh, the friction would have if someone were moving at, say, the speed of sound or the speed of light. He's still able to uh, get up to near light speed. But he does show some signs of slowing down. So I think that about does it. And uh, so long and until my next review. See ya.